Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the letter to the Ephesians by Paul, dated around AD 61. We've moved into chapter 4. We've moved into the uh, transition moment in the letter from the vertical dimension of Christian doctrine to the horizontal dimension of Christian doctrine. And uh, for Paul, the center point, the hinge point, of all Christian doctrine is the Ecclesia's Church. The Ecclesia Church is the hinge point for any systematic approach to doctrine as far as Paul the Apostle is concerned. And so he deals very specifically with the church here in chapter 4. It's the transition chapter. And we're going to look at uh, the doctrine of the work of the Spirit in uh, verses 11 through 16. We're going to look specifically at the uh, work of the Spirit within the Ecclesia Church. Let's begin with uh, verses 11 and 12 on the left. And Paul goes on to say, he says, uh, And Christ, through the Spirit, has given some indeed as apostles, as uh, messengers of the gospel, some, moreover, as prophets, as the inspired speakers of the truth, and some, moreover, as evangelists, as, as preachers of the gospel. And then additionally, some, moreover, as shepherds and teachers, or pastors and teachers, which applies to the teacher of doctrine. So, this is Paul. This is the giving of the Holy Spirit to each individual with distinction at this stage. The Holy Spirit came in a general way at Pentecost, but now Paul says... Now I'm going to teach you the doctrine of the Spirit that gives the different gifts of edification. So this is the giving of the Spirit with distinction. And then in verse 12, Paul says, The purpose for these distinction and these offices of the Spirit is for the perfecting of the saints, to fit, to frame, and to mend all believers into maturity, uh, all for the work of ministry, all for the work of a Christian ministry. And he said it's all for the edification of the body of Christ, meaning the church. It's all for the uh, oikodomeo, the upbuilding of the structure of the Christian faith. The gifted persons listed in verse 11 serve as the foundational gifts of the edification of the church. So in these first two verses, we're given the uh, foundational gifts and their purpose being... Uh, the ministry of edification, of spiritual maturity. Now in block 2 in verses 13 and 14, Paul says, uh, and this is given in order that we might all attain, that we might arrive at and attain the unity of faith. Remember, Paul already said that they already are to preserve that where they, uh, that situation within which they already exist, which is the unity of spirit. They already exist in the unity of spirit, but he says your goal is to reach the unity of faith, to reach the unity in agreement concerning doctrine, and to reach the knowledge of the Son of God in a full discernment of Jesus Christ. So the maturity of doctrine is equated with the full discernment of Jesus Christ. And he says in that way you'll be a true andratilion, you will be a true eschatological believer. That's a key concept for Paul here. He gives birth to the concept of the uh, eschatological believer, the uh, andra tilion. You will be a true eschatological believer within the realm of the Spirit if you strive for doctrinal maturity, if you strive for the unity of faith. And that means that you will be a empowered with that uh, measure of maturity equal to the fullness of the knowledge of Christ, and you will uh, reach that uh, tes pisteas, and tes pisteas is not the subject of genitive here in this section. It is instead reference to the content of faith or doctrine. So Paul is specifically talking about reaching a maturity in understanding Christian doctrine, which he equates with the maturity of understanding the person of Jesus Christ. As we mature in Christ, we mature in doctrine. 
that's a very key equation for the Apostle Paul and for his concept of the eschatological believer. Now in verse 14, he says, uh, and I teach you this so that you understand that uh, you need to move toward doctrinal maturity so that uh, you will no longer be tossed about by false teachers. You'll no longer fluctuate between uh, truth and error. You'll no longer have surges of uh, following the latest teaching. You won't be simple-minded. You won't be immature. You will be mature, and you'll no longer be carried about. You'll no longer be pushed about by these external um, random teachings or disruptive or even erroneous teachings. If you reach the maturity of faith, if you reach the maturity of doctrine, you'll have the gift of discernment, and you won't be pushed around you won't be led astray by the air of these, uh, the latest thing that comes along, the latest teaching that happens to come along. You won't be uh, misdirected by it because you will be solidly fitted together and rooted in the word of Christ and in a mature doctrine. And this is the problem with a, a lot of believers uh, early on in a conversion. If believers don't receive follow-up and edification and instruction in doctrine, then they can uh, be trapped in that childish level of understanding of Christianity and never reach the maturity to stand on their own two feet, never reach the maturity to stand against uh, falsehoods and false erroneous teaching. So the church has a responsibility to really raise up new believers. So Paul is giving very specific instruction here about the work of the Spirit. It really is a, a work that is trying to uh, strengthen the believers, strengthen the Ephesian believers, so they will be firmly founded in the mature doctrine of Christ, and they can uh, escape the error of false teaching. And from here we'll take a look at uh, verse 15. And in verse 15, Paul concludes, this is his conclusive statement, and he says, Additionally, continue in the speaking of the truth in agape self-giving. Continue to, continue to speak and to live and to present the uh, spiritual truth of mature doctrine so that uh, you will mature in Christ in all things. You will mature in Christ. Alexano and Christos, you will mature in Christ. And he says, uh, because Christ is the kafali alignment of the church, he's the head of the church, and uh, this aletheuo means to prove the faith by being true, by, by your actions and your words, be true to the mature doctrine in Christ, and that way you will prove the faith to others. So, he says the goal is to reach the oxano and Christos. The goal is to reach the maturity in Christ. This whole first section of 11 through 15 is reaching Christian maturity. Reaching Christian maturity of doctrine in Christ. Let's look at the first uh, <clears throat> inserted triad here because it's important that we get a, a graphic picture just as well. It's the... Uh, it's the, a little mini triad I've got here for the Andra Tilion. It's a triad for what does it mean to be the eschatological believer. And it means, number one, henotes to pneuma, within the unity of the spirit we seek edification through apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. And then henotes to pistuo, and then we reach the unity of faith, which means we seek the fullness of knowledge in Christian doctrine. So the spirit moves and works in the church as a movement from the unity of spirit to the unity of faith. It moves toward that uh, maturity of doctrine. And then we become the Andra Tilion by employing the spiritual gifts of edification and seeking doctrinal maturity. We become true eschatological believers, says Paul. This is his doctrine of the eschatological believer. What is his doctrine of the eschatological believer? It is the eschatological believer who lives under the kafali alignment of Christ as head of the church and seeks maturity in Christian doctrine. 
maturity and standing firm in the faith, firm in mature doctrine. And from here we're only going to look at one more verse, but it's, it gets its own attention because verse 16 is a very powerful, contentful verse of Scripture. So let's take a look at this verse 16. And Paul is going to continue and he says, uh, And from Christ, from Christ, all of the church body is joined together and held together. It is a uh, soon armo logeo and sum harmas lego. It is joined together and held together. And the sum armo logeo means to be closely jointed together. And the uh, sum babazo is the uh, being held together after being joined together in a very tight unity and it's supposed to take place through every joint and uh, the supply of the uh, members of the church through every part of its epicorregio, every part of its choreography of united parts. So Paul describes the church as a choreography. It's an epicorregio of a uh, a symphony of united parts that they work in a very harmonious way together toward reaching the maturity of the Christian life and the maturity of the church. So the church exists as a epikoregio. That's a beautiful Greek concept. The church exists as an epikoregio, a spiritual symphony, a spiritual choreography where each member of the church body participates in that symphony of reaching maturity, that symphony of, ex of mature expression of doctrine and Christian life. And he says this will be done under the actualization of the measure in Christ for each part in the church, all for the purpose of the maturity of the body according to the building up of love, of agape self-giving. And he uses that uh, oxasis, spiritual growth and spiritual maturity concept and again, that uh, sum armologeo means it references the fitting together of stones without mortar, which took place then. And so it's about uh, the great precision, precision and the great preparation work that had to take place for fitting rock construction together without mortar. It had to be a, very, a lot of work, a lot of precision a lot of effort to reach that kind of uh, fitting together and that uh, kind of unification. Now, Sumbabidzo refers to bringing doctrinal arguments together and analytically drawing conclusions to reconcile the evidence. And so uh, this is tremendous, tremendous teaching in 4.11 through 16. And let's take a look at the final summary triad in the bottom right. And it is the... Uh, choreography of spirit. And it begins with the uh, sumar mologeo. We are joined together in the unity of the spirit. And then sumbabidzo, and then we are held together by the unity of faith, the unity of mature doctrine. And then that by being uh, joined together and united together and held together, we are the mature eschatological believer within the church who participates in the spiritual choreography of koinonia fellowship. We become mature Christians in a choreography of spiritual existence. We have to really appreciate Paul's vocabulary because Paul was a scholar and he was very aware of and very self-conscious of the Greek terms he would use. His doctrine is very much precisely chosen and has a very precise vocabulary. So we have to pay very special attention to the fact that uh, Paul is telling us that we should pay attention to the vocabulary of the henotes to pneuma, the unity of the spirit within which the church exists, and the henotes to pistuo, the unity of faith and doctrine which in with the church reaches maturity, and the andra teleon of what it means to be a believer as an eschatological believer who lives according to the spirit and then we understand the three concepts of a uh, sum, sum armo 
Logeo and Sumba Bidzo, the fact that the work of the Spirit joins together the members of the church and holds together in a longevity each member of the church unto a unity of faith and a unity of faith based on mature doctrine. And that way we become the uh, our excess mature Andra Tilion, the mature eschatological believer. So this group of scriptures from 4.11 to 4.16, Paul takes up the doctrine of Christian maturity and takes up the doctrine of the epicoregio of spirit, maturity and choreography of spirit, the work of the spirit in the church, the church is that hinge point that swings between the vertical doctrines of the faith and the horizontal doctrines of the faith for Paul. So it gives us, uh, we will continue in the next lesson uh, by picking up this uh, continued emphasis on the realm of the spirit, the horizontal dimension of the Christian life. But this gives us a great look at that hinge point moment of uh, the church for Paul. It's the center of his Christian doctrine. The church is that hinge point or that pivot point between the vertical doctrine and the horizontal doctrine of the Christian faith. That'll wrap up this lesson uh, on chapter 4, verses 11 through 16.